In this tutorial I'll show how I created these gear movements. Only one gear is animated and all the rest are using drivers. Which means if I want to change the speed of the gears, I only have to change the animated gear and the rest of the gears will follow accordingly because the drivers in them are in relation to the animation on the main gear. This tutorial is not for absolute beginners to Blender. You can look at it as a companion guide for the downloadable project file. Feel free to use the project file as you wish. We shall use some basic math to make sure the movement is good enough for the eyes. However, I am not looking to create a mathematically or technically precise animation identical to real world gears. Also keep in mind even though I am using empties to control the animation, this is also possible using an armature where one bone is animated and other bones follow accordingly by using drivers and the animation as source data for the driver. I also found it best to first make sure my animations were looking good by using simple gears, then after that, model and texture the actual gears that will go in my final animation. I chose to create an empty that will hold the animations and drivers, then parent the gear mesh and bezier circle to it, so that if I have to make any changes to the models or even change them entirely, I won't have to worry about causing problems with my animations and other things. I first created basic gears, since I am using these as a guide to get the general shape and size of the gears working right. Later on I will model other gears based on these and texture them too. Then lastly I will parent the new final gears to the empties and everything should work fine. This is why animating the empties was better since I could replace the first gears without losing any animations. And like I mentioned earlier this would work with an amateur as well. In order to make sure whatever size gears we create interlock convincingly, we need to do some mathematics. So I made sure the gear diameter was divisible by 2, and I also made sure whatever number of gear teeth I had, they should also be divisible by 2. For the initial gear, the diameter was 2 meters, the real life size doesn't matter here in case you're thinking a 2 meter gear sounds ridiculous. Note that I'm getting measurements from the Bezier circle, not the gear mesh model. Then I went with 16 for the amount of gear teeth. But I had to make sure when I used the array modifier I would get 16 teeth on the 2 meter diameter gear. To figure out what size each gear tooth should be, I did the following. I had to get the circumference or at least a close approximation of the Bezier circle. For this we multiply the diameter of the Bezier circle by pi. You can check the diameter of our Bezier circle here. In the case of our main 2 meter gear the number is 6.2831. Now 6.2831 divided by 16 teeth is 0 0.3926. For any other Bezier circles I will create from now on, I will make sure I can divide or multiply their diameters by factors of 2. These are the sizes of my gears and how they relate to the initial one. Note again, these are the Bezier circle sizes. For the animations, I placed two keyframes on the initial gear and added to the F curve. A cycle modifier was repeat with offset so that it keeps rotating even when I increase the animation duration. The curves were set to linear for consistent movement. This animation will drive all the other gears rotations using drivers. Now we shall place drivers on the other gears. The Blender documentation reads as following when explaining what drivers are. Drivers are a way to control values of properties by means of a function or a mathematical expression. Effectively, drivers consist of a driver configuration that specifies 0, 1 or more input values using other properties or object transformation channels and combines them using a predefined mathematical function or a custom Python expression. An animation f-curve that maps the output of the driver configuration to the final value to apply to the driven property. What we want is to add a driver to a gear that will be driven by the rotation from the gear it is connected to. Because of how gears work, the rotation will have to go in the opposite direction. I created a driver with a type selected to scripted expression. On this driver, var represents the gear rotation I will be using as a source for driving. In order to get the rotation syncing correctly, I will use this formula, which is basically taking the circumference of the driven and driving gears, and divides the greater number by the lower number. I take a quotient of this formula and divide var by it, and then multiply by negative 1, 
so I can get reverse rotation. If the driving gear has a larger circumference than the driven gear, I will multiply var by the quotient. I then multiply by negative 1 so that I get a reverse movement. This is where using numbers that are multiples of 2 really make my work easier since I am using whole numbers for the driver expressions. Thank you for watching. Feel free to expand on this. I have left a link to the download of this file on the description. You will also find there a link to a time lapse of the creation process for my final scene.